So we sat with them and we said, well, actually, if we build this building out of timber, <coughs> and then we waited a little bit while they kind of hit themselves back up again and stopped laughing. If we build this building out of timber, we won't need a tower crane because we can build nine stories off the back of the truck. We can build it with a mobile crane. So we don't need a tower crane. If you don't have a tower crane for 18 months, all your over, all any of your over sailing licenses that go with that, all the foundations that go with the tower crane, then immediately off the bat, you're saving half a million Australian dollars. So then they kind of start listening and start having a chat about it. And, uh, and you say, well, there are other issues. We, have, we don't have an area for site storage. Um, we, don't, uh, we have proximity to adjacent buildings, so we need to keep it quiet. And then we said, also, we have an issue in the UK where we have, I think it's the same here, actually, you have a benchmark building that nobody's ever seen. So you have this benchmark building, and you have a target, uh, a target rate that you need to get below in terms of reduction of carbon dioxide emissions through, um, from that benchmark to your building. Am I making any sense? So <clears throat> we need to reduce that by 10%. It's 20% now, it's going to be 25% in April, and in 2016 it's going to be 40%. So we went to the local authority and we said to the local authority, well actually, <clears throat> by building this building in timber, we, are not, we do not have this level of emissions because we're not doing any concrete, and we're storing this volume, 300 tonnes of carbon is going to be stored in the body of this building. That's nearly 1,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide which is equivalent to 21 years of this building's emissions. So by building this building in timber, we're actually at that 10% level you've set us, we're actually compliant for two for the first 210 years of the building's life. So to our amazement, they turned around and were like, yeah, okay, we, we buy that argument. <laughs> so we were then able to go back to our client and say to our client, well, you know those PVs that you put on the roof that you never turn off? <laughs> um, you don't have to do that here. I mean, the thing is, I believe in renewable energy, don't get me wrong, I'm not being simple about it. But the thing is about renewable energy, in a site like this, in central London, we don't have a lot of sunshine. <laughs> and PVs don't work terribly well, windmills don't work terribly well, because it's loads of buildings all around it. Uh, ground source heat pumps don't work very well because we've got clay soil and it reaches equilibrium after about 15 years. So actually a lot of these, frustratingly, are box ticking items. Now we thought this is actually a pro this is actually a bona fide way of reducing the um, emissions that it takes to build this building. And so everybody said yes. So that was great. And we took them to Austria, and um, well, they took us, frankly. <laughs> and, and, and so we went to Austria, and we went to the factory that I showed you before, and that was an illicit photograph I took. Uh, and then we showed them this little sketch as part of these conversations. So we said that we were very interested in this type of building, because when you're an architect, you get talked about like this, and this is how people started to build at the beginning of the 20th century, and this is how you build in reinforced concrete, and this is a slab, and these are columns. And this is a different way of building, and these are panels, and they're floor slabs and wall slabs, wall panels, and it's a different, and quicker, and easier way of building, and it weighs a quarter of the weight, so you need a quarter of the foundations. And if you're building a building that's a quarter of the weight of the building that it would have been if it had been in concrete, then it's obviously going to be easier and quicker and faster, etc. We did a program for the contractor, which made them laugh, obviously, because we're architects. And we showed them 72 weeks, about 18 months to build a concrete frame building, which they brought here. And then we showed them the concrete, well, then we showed them the program in timber. And we said to them, we build this building in timber, we can get the whole thing done in under a year from beginning to scrap, from, from beginning to end. So we did this little diagram for them to the sketch here. Now, this building, all the floors in this building, all the floor slabs, all the walls, all the lift cores, all the stair cores, are all made from this solid timber. So this building acts as you have, like a honeycomb. So the whole thing is a structural bonded building all together. So this allows us to have lots of different plans all the way up the building. Now another thing that's happened in the UK, another regulation that we have, and these all form our briefs, it's one so another regulation we have is about five years ago, the new mayor brought in a law which said 50% of all new housing has to be for social use. So all the developers threw their hands up, you know, because that's good below market rent. So they threw that, oh my god, you're gonna kill the property market, it's gonna be a nightmare, and then about two weeks later everybody just got on with it again. And so what happens now is 
We don't do 50%, we do about 35% because you go and see local government, you walk in there with your client, the client takes his Rolex off, puts it in his back pocket, sits down with local government and tells them how poor he is. <laughs> and you have to keep quiet. <laughs> I have to keep quiet. So, but what that does mean is we have, in this building, the first three floors here are built, um, are socially rented. The next floor here is shared ownership, and then the, or half shared ownership, and then the remaining private for sale. So we have within the, the, the uh, socially rented, we have four different flat types, and then within the private for sale, we have three different flat types, and then with the shared ownership, we have two different flat types, and they're all different sizes. Because in socially rented uses, you have strict guidelines on flat sizes. But in private for sale, you don't have any guidelines at all. <laughs> so bizarrely, the socially rented ones are always bigger than the private for sale ones. <laughs> <laughs> the only way that you can tell the private for sale ones is that they have granite work surfaces in the kitchen. <laughs> and uh, slightly shinier taps. So this then gives rise to a ground floor plan that looks a little bit like this. And so we have a private for sale staircase and a socially rented staircase and a socially rented lift and a private for sale lift and a private for sale bin store and a socially rented bin store and you know the reason is that is because they don't you know never the twain shall meet so social engineering go hang. So this is a socially rented plan here you can see this is a three bed six person unit here um, balcony there, little study area here um, and this is our staircase here this staircase here going sailing past now what this allowed us to do was in the UK, as part of our fire regulations, we have, um, we have small buildings and we have tall buildings. And it's, it's, um, it sounds simple. <laughs> and um, any building below 11 metres is a small building, and the, uh, the fire escape issues are less onerous than they are with a tall building. So what we did with this building is we had a small building, and on top of the small building, we put a tall building. So we have two separate buildings within the same building. That makes any sense. So this is our tall building here. So this is our, our um, private flats here. You can tell they're a little bit smaller. And, and these are our smoke vents here, which take smoke, um, which are removed the air from the lobby in eight seconds. So this is a two bed flat here, one bed flat here. Oh, this is two beds. Well, two bed, two bed, and uh, one bed and uh, two bed. So as you can see, that as you go up, the, the floors are changing all the way through. So I should actually at this point go back and say our engineers that we work with, Technica, um, and I know they have a few friends in the audience. But Technica are um, an engineering practice we've been working with for years and um, work very closely with engineers. We really like engineers who have their office all the time. They make tea and coffee for us and stuff. And they, uh, <laughs> they don't. And they, um, <laughs> I can say anything here. <laughs> so, they, um, so they give us a checklist. And um, so we go to them and we say, we want to build this building nice stories in timber. And they go, oh, okay, brilliant, let's get our teeth into this. And they give us a little checklist so we can keep up with them. And it's a movement, solidity, acoustics, and fire. So I'm just going to whistle through those now. Um, so again, going back to the three-dimensional advantage of this material, you have, a, you have a load path which runs in the direction of the top and the bottom laminate. And, but you also have strength running both ways because this is a cross laminate. This is working both ways. In terms of the wall panel, you have a deep beam that runs all the way across. So you're able to pick up loads above and below through the deep beam. So in terms of creep, in terms of the shortening due to compression, this is one of our initial concerns, is that if you imagine <clears throat> the way this building is put together is you get a wall, and you get a floor, and you put a wall on top, and you put a floor on top of that. So it's very, very simple. And that all the way through was the premise of this job, was to make it incredibly simple and very straightforward so that we didn't get lost. So <clears throat> we were concerned about that compression, but actually the Austrians assured us that that compression would be less than 0.6 millimetres per floor, and they were absolutely right. 